Okay. So we're looking at basically the month of July. Um, and we had, and as is kind of consistent with other systems, is even the wet June kind of carried over. So we have used, consumed less water than we did last year. 10,250,000 gallons produced by the wells during July. And um, 5,802,000 gallons are consumed through customer meters. It works out to be 342,000 gallons per day produced by the wells. And... 193 gallons per day produced through customer meters. The equivalent customer consumption of 411 gallons per day per service connection at 471 connections. Uh, as on account of our water loss is 4,448,000 gallons. Uh, now you can see how that compares with um, uh, with last year, where we had uh, just almost 11.5 million gallons produced by the wells and a lot more registered through customer uh, uh, meters, over 7 million gallons last year, and 39,000 gallons per day for the wells and 221 for the uh, for our customers. Um, I'm going to go ahead, Jesse, and go over to my own report so I can kind of follow it down there. Okay. As we scroll down, under, first of all, before I go down to water system items, are there any questions about the uh, consumption and production report? No. Whoa. Okay. All right. So as we go down, scroll down under water system items, the big, big one probably is on everybody's mind is what happened recently. We had a water line break on Lakeside at the boat launch. <clears throat> and, um, and, and Calvin, you're welcome to inter interject on this because you saw it as well. This is what happened right. there. But basically, what had happened, we thought it was our water main. We have a water main that comes down from Main Street, runs by the boat launch, and ends up at the uh, uh, Boilers condos there where they have a meter. Um, and as it turned out, as we dug it up, it, it, it had been bubbling up to the surface. And so we dug it up and it determined that it was not that main, which has been in for a few years, but it turns out to be it was a service line going from a meter out on Main Street right next to the old Boilers restaurant on Main Street across from the Mercantile all the way out to Lake House and the boat docks there. So it was actually a uh, 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 own, line is owned by Chan. Wow. So we, uh, we got it repaired, and it turned out to be, and I was thinking this was going to be a show and tell time, but I don't, it won't work on Zoom. The line is actually considered irrigation line, 160 PSI, inch and a quarter irrigation line, not standard what you would use for public works. Uh, this went in many years ago um, before you, before Chan had it. Um, but sometimes I guess they wanted to save some money there. So it it was kind of not a, a, kind of an entirely round pipe anymore. It was kind of compressed from the weight of uh, the vehicles and boats driving over it. So mm -hmm. we had traffic control with three traffic control people there because of, of the boat launch. And they had to close Lakeside down that day. But what we did determine to do, and I worked this out with Dan Lincoln, who did the work, is that he's going to build Chan for the work, because technically it really is on his side of the meter. And then uh, hopefully he can collect from Chan that way. If not, then we'll see if we can uh, see if we can step in and maybe certify him. Calvin, do you want to intersperse anything on this or interject anything? No, other than um, it's one of those that um, it's a single meter and it feeds um, the uh, button hook as well as the uh, float house and uh, and all the uh, float homes out there, so it's a single meter feeder and feeding all those. All right. Now, what we taught, what it did do is, um, Kristen, who's Chan's manager there, we talked to her and explained to her the situation that yes, we need a repair there, but it may break in other sections in there. So, what we suggested the long term fix that will save him money if he goes ahead and does it, and that is have that one meter out by the main street service the restaurant only, cut it off, and then install a new meter for the lake house and the uh, float homes and the docks there right next to the condominiums meter. Therefore, the, uh, he wouldn't be responsible for that. It comes off of our main, and that eliminates that section of old irrigation pipe. Uh, they know about it. Whether they'll do it or not, I don't know. But, you know, at this point from now on, if it happens again, too, it's on. It's, that's on their side of the meter. So you're saying irrigation pipe uh, supplies the, the restaurant? Yes, it's a, it's a thin wall, and I've got it, Larry. I can show it to you as well. It's a very thin wall. In fact, they don't even make compression fittings that fit on that. It's so thin. So we had to use you know, barbed, barbed fittings and inserts to make it work to get it back together. Well, uh, that's, not, that's not to code, then. That's correct. It is not to code. They, uh, they was, whoever put it in didn't put it into code. Okay. That's correct. 
So, so they're going to have to they're going to have to uh, replace that on their own dime to get. Yep, that. They, that's that's right because it's on the back side, their side of the meter, as we discovered. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. Unless there's any questions, I'll move on to number two. The touch screen of the Lime Kiln booster station showing reservoir levels uh, failed. We actually it was installed yesterday. I saw it. They're finishing the programming today to on that, so that'll be. And then what that does is that our Lime Kiln booster station, which feeds Cape Horn, it tells us what the reservoir levels are at out there at both, both the um, main reservoir, which is at the Ponderay Pines, and the Cape Horn Estates Reservoir. And the reason that's uh, critical is because we don't have access to that in the winter, and one of them you don't have access to even to get climbing up on looking on a hatch down there. So the, the, although the display went out, all the controls know what the levels are, and they've been doing fine all this time. We've never had any issues, but we still need to know what's going on there. So that uh, is, in, is installed today. Uh, number three, electrical panel of the Farragut Tower was rebuilt. It was a... Basically, the electrical panel had been there for many, many years, and the uh, uh, breakers were getting corroded and failing, and so we had Bigfoot Technologies come out and basically replace the guts of it so that we don't uh, have the power going on and off and then going to battery back up and then back to power and whatnot. So that was, uh, that was finished here in the last week or so. Uh, number four, uh, you got some annual. This is the time year we get our annual water sampling uh, done. So that'll be coming up. We don't have the, a lot of the big samples like we did. I think it was last year with lead and copper, but our lab bill will bump a little bit uh, next month due to some annual water sampling that all water systems are required to do. But the good news is that we have our maximum waivers uh, on the amount of what we have to test. So our bills aren't as high as like, for instance, newer systems, which don't have any waivers. So we save quite a bit of money there. All right, moving on to the sewer uh, sewer production. The land application treatment site, and this kind of goes over some numbers, which you're familiar with, but I've got an update there. Treats approximately 50,000 gallons per day during the summer months and approximately 17,000 gallons per day during the winter months. Now, since April, we've been treating an average of 23,000 gallons per day. That includes all the way from April till now. And I think uh, we may also be down there because when you have wetter weather, not as many people have been coming out. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's down a little, uh, down somewhat from what it was a year ago. Uh, sewer maintenance items. Um, the irrigation pond seepage testing update. Uh, we found um, poss uh, possible seam leak, which Aquadrone repaired on Tuesday. And Jesse, do you happen to have any picture of that that I sent you that you could post? I do. Give me a moment. Um, I might blink out the screen for a little bit, but just bear with me. You'll. Then I will go ahead and just report on the rest of it there while you while you do that. Um, Perfect. Okay. The um, we finished the, and what we were doing is we repaired a possible seam. Now we are actually filling up the pond to see if it'll hold, so we can actually run the seepage test probably next week or the following week. Um, so that's where we're at right now. It's going to depend on if that holds. We assume that it will. Well, actually, well, you can't, you can't assume anything, but we've done everything we can short of replacing the liner now to make sure it works. The valves are all holding, and now we're ch checking this one spot that we felt might be a seam leak that we've uh, repaired. Um, and then uh, the last item on there is we've had septic, uh, seven septic tanks pumped in the past month. Of course, when summer comes, more people are, are out there, and there's more, op more opportunity for something to go wrong or to fail. So got that there. Um, 